text of the Bible. For instance, Jesus uh, in the book of um, John says, uh, the Father and I, or I and the Father are one. How does he explain that? Because if I am Mr. Jonathan as I am, I can't be my father and I cannot make a statement claiming to be that my father is me. Mr. Either. Jonathan, uh, if that is your name, could I say, you must have listened attentively because you are interested, but so was I. I'm open to correction, but I think Mr. Didat explained that. The very truth thing when he says, me and my father are one. Am I right, brothers? Um, did he not explain that? Mr. Or did he? Mr. Chairman? No, all the, the, no I'll answer that's the question then. Thank you very much. As, uh, no, Mr. That's Mr. The Chairman, question. just allow me to. You see, um, like this gentleman that was here before me, Mr. Didat was interpolating things. Like, for instance, he but read now, something. But now, hold it. You've asked a question. You can answer. You can understand the question. Okay. I can. Sure. Thank you. I did explain, I think, that this oneness that Jesus was talking about was in its context, verses 28, 29, 30. That is the context. That no man can pluck them out of my hand, 28. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand, verse 29. I and my father are one. That is the context. And I feel that any reasonable person could see that. But since the Christian has an idea that this oneness implies, you know, getting into a sausage, like one sausage, one piece, like uh, God Almighty told Adam and Eve that they twin shall be one flesh, like a sausage. They were not. They were still two separate persons. Now, this same John, the one that we have quoted, John chapter 10, verse 30, in John chapter 17, verse 20 to 22, he explains what oneness is. He says that they all may be one, O any one, all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, who, the disciples among them, the traitor, Judas, among them, Peter, who cursed, abused, and swore him, among them, the ten who left him in the lurch when he was most in need. All these, the Father, the Son, and all these twelve, may be one, that they all may be, also may be one in us. I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be made perfect in one. I'm only quoting St. John. So in other words, all the twelve disciples and Jesus and God made into one sausage. Is that what that oneness implies? All, you know, putting through a mincer and taking them out as a one sausage. What is this oneness? It is a oneness in purpose. You see, the same oneness that Jesus has explained in John 10, 30, same oneness Peter and uh, Judas and the doubting Thomas, everybody, all with one with God, one person, so I in you and you in me and they in us. What is this? Sausage? So if you understand it like a sausage, then I know I have no answer. But I says, no, this is not that one sausage business is talking about. It's talking about they all are one in purpose to do the will and plan of God. That oneness. There is no other oneness. He's one with God, meaning whatever God wants him to do, he's doing. He's vibrating on the same wavelength as God. That is oneness. Not he becomes God or God becomes man, Jesus.